Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're gonna do a little assembly and maintenance on this little guy right here. This is the uh, Null Knives Raiden. So, a uh, very, very interesting little piece here. I'm, I'm sort of uh, cautiously optimistic at this point. This has the uh, distinction of I have carried it a little bit before the uh, disassembly here, partly just because of my schedule, and partly because, well... Eh, mostly schedule, but also there's always the question about, you know, if you're dealing with something that is a prototype, and this is a prototype, you know, whether there's going to be some kind of a, uh, an issue in the disassembly department. Hopefully not, though. Sorry, I just ran up some stairs. So one thing that's kind of interesting here is we're seeing that the clip seems to be, which, by the way, the clip has no screw externally. The clip seems to be being held on by this uh, tail screw at the end there, which is interesting. Then we'll go on ahead and we will pop out the pivot, which all the hardware here is T8, and that's it's not free spinning, so that's good. Um, and let's see if this guy just kind of comes apart. Kind of suspect it will, because all of the points that are holding it together... There we go. Just walk it a little bit. And there we go. Holy crap. So the thing that's kind of impressive about this uh, is it's just it's super duper lightweight, right? I'm actually kind of kind of surprised. Um, this is not a particularly crazy expensive knife, at least at their uh, the pre-order pricing. And uh, by the way, if you're curious about this cotton patch full of alcohol or any of the other tools I'm using, nickshabazz.com slash tools. But no, uh, they've done a whole bunch of internal milling here. All the, the milling is done pretty well. They have done pretty remarkably good work here. Um, I am I'm suitably impressed. This is being made by a factory. That factory's name apparently cannot be released. Uh, there is only, but it is being made overseas, and there is only one overseas factory that plays that stupid game. So we can make a, a creative guess, if you will, but at the same time... Um, yeah, so this is an interesting, um, it's an interesting thing. And by the way, I want to be clear, I'm not dunking on the owner of Null Knives for doing that. I'm dunking on the factory for making that stupid request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sooner or later, they're going to realize that making that request is just as much an answer as just telling people who made the knife. But they're trying to protect a high-end reputation, I suppose. I mean, dude, come on. Just means you can do excellence at many prices. But if we look at this guy internally here, we see uh, that, well, <laughs> in practice, like I said, there's a bunch of internal milling here, which I like. Uh, there's a lock bar insert here with a ceramic detent ball. We have ceramic bearings inside cages here. Everything is done very, very well. The lasering's good. Even got a little bit of a um, the, the, the lock bar, uh, I'm sorry, a uh, detent ball ramp here. This is nice. This is really nice. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do now that I've cleaned off the bearings and everything is I'm going to go ahead and start putting this guy back together. Use some 10 weight nano oil here on the bearing race. And then I'll just rotate the bearings to spread the oil evenly. Easy peasy. Uh, I will go ahead. Oh, actually, I didn't clean off the pivot, but I can do that post hoc with this little Q-tip and it ain't so dirty anyways. So I'll do that. And, uh, Turn that on there, and now what I'll do is drop the knife blade itself onto the pivot. One downside is that the way that this is not free spinning is that this uh, little D-shape here on the pivot here, you can see that the pivot's got a little cut off to the side here. That little D-shape needs to fit this little D-shape in this piece here, so you need to make sure everything's aligned. So you're putting things back together as opposed to it being held on this side, which means it can never be out of alignment. Right? In a perfect world, it would be D-shaped all throughout and including on this scale, so it would just never turn like that. Is this uh, bad? No, not necessarily. That was too much oil, but what else is new? But at the same time, it is uh, it is a thing. Then I'm finally, I'm going to put a little oil in the detent. That was too much oil, too. Wow, I am going freaking ham with the nano oil today. Um, but the, really, it's just, it's wanting it's desperately wanting. I was just going to use the tip of this thing to put down a little bit to d distribute what I've got across the thing, but it's just wanting to eat the oil everywhere. Oh, well. Anyways, so uh, I just need to make sure that this little bit right here is aligned properly relative to this one. So I'm going to grab this pair of uh, handy-dandy tweezers and just grab and rotate. 
And now what I should be able to do is I'll press against that so that way everything stays in place. I have to align the stop pin. I have to align this pin in the back here. And then this, by doing that, everything else should line up. And now what I can do is get everything popped into position. And to get everything fully popped, what I'm probably going to need to do is lift up the lock bar. Yep, see, once I did that, it took some pressure out of the system. And now everything can pop back together. I'll go ahead and I'll take a, a little bit of Loctite here on a stick. And I'll use the... Uh, I'll apply it to the pivot here, and I'll go ahead and I'll clean the pivot off. It's not particularly crazy dirty, but it's got a little dirt and such on the outside of it from the factory. So I'll clean that pivot off before I do this, and then I will put a little bit of thread locker on there. Yeah, that should do the trick. And now I will just kind of put the pivot roughly in place, and again, I'm gonna lift the lock bar just to make sure that everything is uh, hunky-dory, so to speak. Uh, let's go ahead and put everything in there. Hunky-dory is an old freaking phrase. It doesn't, by the way, refer to like a really hot version of a fish from a Disney Pixar movie. Uh, it's... Uh, Probably didn't need to clarify that, come to think of it, but okay. Anyways, and then I'll pop this last screw in here. The only question remaining is, is the pivot tight enough? And, uh, well, we'll see. Right now, the pivot does not appear to be tight enough. The reason I say that is because it's currently slightly off-center. And I bet if I put this out here, I have substantial blade play. Good, so let's go ahead and tighten this a little bit further here. And now when I do that, centering is about where I need it to be. No longer any blade play. I am, however, going to just loosen very slightly this screw and this screw. That should take any remaining... Yeah, okay, good. That should take any remaining tension out of the system now that the pivot is properly adjusted. And... Oh, boy. That's smooth. Yeah, that's, uh, that's well done. I'm... Delighted, honestly. I, I had hoped that that would be as straightforward as it turned out to be, but you, you never know, right? Um, but it's always nice when something's been doing really nice in the pocket, looks good, and everything seems pretty good. Um, but you, you worry about the disassembly. Is there, you know, am I going to pop this open and a swarm of freaking hornets is going to come out or something like that? That's That doesn't generally happen, but still, nonetheless. Uh, so we are all set on this guy, and uh, it's now time to... Uh, Write myself up a review here and uh, let you know how I feel about it. But uh, spoiler alert, it's pretty damn good. So uh, there you go. Hope this has been interesting. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.